Now, we're turning to the Word of God this morning, and we're turning to the New Testament. And this morning, our Scripture reading is taken from Paul's epistle to the Galatians, please. Galatians, and we're in chapter 5, Paul's epistle to the Galatians, and we're in chapter 5, and commence to read from verse 16. Galatians 5, verse 16. And Paul writes, and he says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. And if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another envying one another. And may the Lord bless His Word to our hearts for His name's sake this morning. Is the Holy Spirit evident in your life? That's the question. Is the Holy Spirit evident in your life? Do those this morning see the Holy Spirit in your life? And is the Holy Spirit this morning evident in my life? The question is not this morning, does the Holy Spirit indwell you? The truth is, this morning, child of God, the Holy Spirit, from the moment we are converted, comes into us and indwells us. The problem today is this. So many of God's people forget that reality, that every believer truly born again is indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Paul had to write through the church in Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. He said, Know ye not, Know ye not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit? And child of God this morning, your body, my body, our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit indwells these bodies of ours not only just to indwell these bodies, but to empower our lives, to empower our lives that we should live as we ought. The Holy Spirit indwells us so that He can empower us so that we can act and behave and live the way God demands us. Apart from the Lord Jesus, apart from salvation, 
The Holy Spirit is the greatest gift that God has given to the church. The Holy Spirit is the greatest gift that God has given to the believer because it's the Holy Spirit who indwells us, enables us, and empowers us to live the way God demands. So many preachers today stay clear concerning the subject of the Holy Spirit. The problem is because it's a conflicting message. It's only a conflicting message when preachers fail to speak on it from the Scriptures. Too many have begun to, to preach on the Holy Spirit concerning man's thoughts. The Holy Spirit being taught from the Scriptures is the proper way to learn concerning the Holy Spirit. Do you know any preacher today who stays clear from ministering on the Holy Spirit is playing into the devil's hands? Because the, devil's, the devil knows the power that the Holy Spirit has in the life of every believer. And believers nowadays have almost forgot about the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit evident in your life? Is the Holy Spirit evident in my life this morning? Tell me, what about your family circle this morning? Is the Holy Spirit evident in your life as far as your family is concerned? Can they see the evidence of a Holy Spirit-filled life in your life? Tell me this. What about your work colleagues this morning? What about your employer? Can your, empl can your employer, can he or she see any evidence of the Holy Spirit in your life? What about those who work under you, brother, or under you, sister? Tell me this. Is there evidence lived before them concerning the Holy Spirit in your life? How do we come across before others? Declares the reality of these Christian lives of ours. So I got before the Lord, the Lord impressed this upon my heart this morning. For this morning, but first of all for my own heart, is the Holy Spirit evident in your life. Your neighbors, is the Holy Spirit evident in your life to your neighbors? There's more than carrying a big Bible on a Lord's Day morning, brother. A lot of our neighbors, a lot of our friends see plenty on the Lord's Day, but they see very little during the week. Is the Holy Spirit evident in your life? The reason why the Lord challenged my heart before He challenged your heart is this. The reason is because you and I are without excuse if we fail to live the way God demands us to live. Why? Because the Holy Spirit has been given to you and the Holy Spirit has been given to me to enable us to live, to behave, and to act the way God demands and desires. Is the Holy Spirit evident in your life and in me? My text this morning is Galatians 5. Look at verse 22 and 23. Now, here's what the Lord wants to show us this morning. Listen to what He says, the Apostle Paul inspired of the Spirit to write this, of course. But the fruit 
Notice there's no S on it. People talk about the fruits of the Spirit. There's no such thing as the fruits of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. It's. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. I want to pause there for a moment. It says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Within the fruit of the Spirit this morning, there are nine manifestations of grace that should be in the heart and should be in the life of every believer. If the fruit of the Spirit is being produced in your life, you'll find in your life there will be nine manifestations of grace that should be there. I mentioned just the first three because within the fruit of the Spirit, there are three clusters of grace. The first three, love, joy, peace, deals with the inward sense that first of all affects ourselves. And I want to deal with those three first of all this morning, love, joy, peace. And the thing is this this morning, child of God, is the Holy Spirit evident in your inner life? Because of the whole, if the fruit of the Spirit is not being produced in your inner life, well then He won't be able to produce that fruit within the outer life. Because the first three manifestations of grace that comes from within the fruit of the Spirit has to affect the inner man, the inner sense that affects us first of all. Look at the very first one. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. You know, that's the first manifestation of grace as far as the fruit of the Spirit is concerned. It's love. What kind of love does the fruit of the Spirit produce? The fruit of the Spirit, first of all, will produce that great manifestation of grace called love. Love for God. If the Holy Spirit is really evident in your life and is taking effect as far as the inward sense is concerned, first and foremost, your love will be proper. Your love for God. Your love for God this morning will excel all other loves. That's if the fruit of the Spirit is being produced in the inner man by the Holy Spirit. Do you think the Holy Spirit this morning who indwells us wants to produce a love within us that will put God second? No! The Holy Spirit will produce first and foremost the love that God demands. Listen, child of God, this morning, listen, the Lord Jesus says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And the fruit of the Spirit produces this love for God. I can say something now, child of God, if you love something or you love someone more than God. Listen, it's not of the Holy Spirit. Do you think this morning the third person of the Trinity would have us loving anything, would have us loving anyone more than God? I don't think so, child of God. In fact, I know so that He would. No way would the Holy Spirit produce a love within our own hearts? 
He would not produce a love this morning that would be for any other apart from God. The Lord Jesus dumped us out. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And this is why the Holy Spirit has been given to you. This is why the Holy Spirit has been given to me, so that you and I could have this love for God. Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 17 that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith being root, rooted together and grounded in love. Is the Holy Spirit evident in your life as far as your inward love for Him is concerned? I want you to notice the second manifestation of grace that the Spirit produces concerning His fruit is joy. What does Paul mean when he was inspired to write that one joy? Does it mean that we live in a pleasant experience? Does he mean a joy that comes when life is well? Does it mean a joy that we have when, when, when life is, is perfect for us? No. Do you know what that joy means? It means to have a constant delight in God. That's joy that every believer's joy, their first source of joy, will be a constant delight in God. Tell me this, child of God, is the Holy Spirit affecting you this morning so that your love is only for Him and your joy is in Him this morning? Because listen, if you have a love for anything or any other else apart from God and your joy is based on some circumstantial situation and it's not a constant delight in God, well then it's not of the Holy Spirit. Because the love that the Holy Spirit produces is a love for God, and the joy that the Holy Spirit produces is a constant delight in God. Isaiah the prophet penned, Isaiah 61 and 10, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord my soul. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me in the garments of salvation. Answer me this question, child of God, as I had to answer it before the Lord this week. Tell me, is the source of your joy this morning in God? Does the source of your joy this morning come from Christ? Jesus, thou joy of loving heart. Gypsy Smith, shortly after he was converted, was approached by a number of men. And the number of men asked Gypsy Smith, what do you apply in your face to make a shine? And Gypsy Smith had no clue what they were talking about. What do you mean, what do I apply in my face to cause my face to shine? Well, he says, there's something you apply in your face since you got this religion business, your face has been shining. What do you rub on your face? He says, listen, folks, it's not what I rub on my face or apply to my face makes me shine. It's the workings of the Holy Spirit upon my heart that makes me shine. Is the Holy Spirit evident in your life as far as your love is concerned, as far as your joy is concerned? Look at the third little phrase of, uh, on this, uh, in this part this morning, peace. Are you always living on edge, child of God? Are you always worrying? Are you always uptight? Because of the fruit of the Spirit, you'll be at peace. Why? First of all, you'll be at peace with God. And I'll tell you another thing, you'll be at peace with others. 
if the Holy Spirit is producing fruit in your life and in my life, remember what the Scriptures teach us. Live peaceably with all men. Peace with God. Peace with others. Here's another one. Peace with ourselves. Is the Holy Spirit evident? As far as the inward self is concerned, that affects ourselves. Look at the text again. Verse 22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Now here we come to the second group of three. Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. And these are the three manifestations of grace that doesn't affect us in the inward sense, but affects us, affects others in the outward sense. This is where the Holy Spirit can be seen, evident as far as the outward sense is concerned. Long-suffering, gentleness, and goodness. See, long-suffering, boys, I can tell you that's a manifestation of grace. wonder this morning, is the fruit of the Spirit being produced in your life? Is it evident in your life as far as long-suffering is concerned? Being constantly treated bad. being constantly insulted, being constantly injured, proves the fruit of the Spirit in this sense. Wonders are somebody's here this morning and you're suffering from a family member. You're suffering from a work colleague. You're suffering from an employer. And your patience is running thin. The Lord wants for you this morning to prove one thing. He wants you to prove that the Holy Spirit is in control of your life. By being patient and long-suffering. A clergyman who, whose parish was near the docks of the River Thames got a burden from the Lord to go and witness to these men, but there's no way these men were reached, could be reached until he decided one day to take off the collar, take off the suit, put on a pair of dungarees and go down and work along with them free of charge. He became as one of them. Every, five every morning at five o'clock in the freezing cold winter's mornings, he would go down and wait to see if they would give him a job to do, but it wouldn't take place until, until a week afterwards. And suddenly he says, hey, boy, if you're doing nothing, we need you here to wheel some stuff from the boats. And there was a plank, and they made him wheel heavy cargo across to the boat and then bring other cargo back, and there he was wheeling across wheeling across this plank that stretched across old mud and gutters and water. Then the rough, the rough man of the crowd, he started jiggling the plank after, the, after he went across about a dozen times, making fun of him. Nobody knew it was a clerk. Nobody knew he was a Christian. Nobody knew he was a minister. And his thirteenth way across the plank, the boy lifted the plank and shook it. And the man fell off and fell with his cargo into the water and into the muck and into the gutter. And the minister prayed for him to hold his temper, and he did. And he looked up, and the boy shouts, Man overboard, man overboard, laughing. And they had the whole congregation beside him laughing, the whole crowd with him laughing. And the minister looked up, and he smiled, and he laughed at them. He says, Hey, boys. If there's any as any as good, you'll come in and rescue me. And the boy that put him off the plank jumped in and got him out. 
Afterwards, that man brought him to his home. And that minister spoke to him of Christ. And the minister asked to him, what made you come in and, and rescue me? He says it was the way you react. I couldn't help but go in. And that minister spoke to him of Christ and led him to Christ. And that man who was the ringleader of all that was going on actually himself started to witness to his other men. And many of them came to Christ. Long suffering goes a long way when you're suffering constant injury and insult. And listen, child of God, this is where the fruit of the Spirit and this is where the Holy Spirit is evident in our lives when we come to this manifestation of grace called long suffering. Wonder is there someone this morning and you're finding it tough to put up with things? This is where the Holy Spirit can produce His fruit in long suffering. Very, very quickly, look at the next one. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness. Do you know something? It's so sad how many God's people are unapproachable. How many Christians are unapproachable. Unapproachable because of their lack of gentleness. In the workplace, Christians can be so unapproachable. Within the church, Christians can be so unapproachable because of their lack of gentleness. I wonder this morning, is the Holy Spirit evident in your life and my life as far as gentleness is concerned? I was speaking to a lady last night, a couple last night. She told me of an elder in Lurgan Baptist Church. His name was Bob Minnis. He was elder along with Pastor Willie Mullen. And Bob Minnis, who was the elder there, was a man who lived and acted and behaved as a man of great character and gentleness. He says, she said, he, she said, because she knew him more than, more than the husband. Bob Minnis was a man who was filled with the Holy Spirit and it was avid. You know something, child of God, in the workplace, now listen to me, in the workplace, in the home, and in the church, and especially in the workplace, and especially in the home, and especially in the church, in fact, especially everywhere, Christians ought to be the most approachable people on God's earth. Because if the Holy Spirit has taken effect in your life this morning, I can tell you, you and I should be the ones of a gentle nature. Do others see the fruit of the Spirit in your life this morning under the title of long-suffering, under the grace of gentleness? Look at the next one, goodness. You know what me, goodness means? I'll tell you what that word goodness doesn't mean. It doesn't mean you're just good to those who are good to you. The Holy Spirit produces a goodness that leaves you doing good to those who are not good to you. Sure, the Lord Jesus said this morning, and if ye do good, uh, it says, if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye for your, for, for the sinners do also do the same. He says in Matthew 5, 44, do good to them that hate you. Child of God, listen, this is where the rubber hits the road this morning. Is the Holy Spirit evident in your life or not? Is he evident in my life or not? I'm telling you, I had to sit up and take stock. Because when the Holy Spirit is evident in your life, 
This is how we make an impact for God. Do you know why I don't think the church of Jesus Christ today is making no impact, making no ground? It's because we're not bearing the fruits of the Holy Spirit. But then look at the last little three very quickly. Because the text says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. That's in the inward sense. Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. That's the outward sense. Look at this bit. Faith, meekness, temperance. That's in the upward sense. That affects the Lord. You see, faith this morning, that faith, the Holy Spirit produces that wonderful uh, manifestation of grace where we are able to trust in God for whatever. Isaiah 12 and 2 says, I will trust in the Lord and not be afraid. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, I will trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not and with all thine understanding and lean not unto thine own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Ah, but this word faith doesn't just mean where we are able to trust in God. This word faith means where God can trust in us. Do you remember how God could trust Daniel down in pagan Babylon to live for him? Do you remember how God could trust Joseph as he was made prime minister of Egypt? wonder this morning, can God trust you and me? Not only can we trust God, Secondly, and the last one, meekness. Meekness. Oh, boys, there's nothing reflects Christ more than meekness. The Lord Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty nine, For I am meek and lowly of heart. A meek person doesn't speak roughly. A meekness person, a meek person doesn't speak roughly. A meek person doesn't speak harshly. A meek person doesn't speak rudely. A meek person doesn't speak bossy. A meek person speaks softly. The Lord Jesus says, For I am weak, meek, and lowly of heart. This was never displayed more than when they were crucifying the Lord to the cross. The Lord said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You see, faith, meekness, displays the love of God in our hearts. See the last one, temperance. Self-control. Temperance means refusing to live the way we want to live. It means living the way God wants us to live. Temperance means allowing the Spirit to have His way and not allowing the flesh to have its way. Now, child of God, those nine manifestations of grace that comes from within the fruit of the Holy Spirit, are they evident in your life? Are they evident in mine? Are they evident in ours? Is the fruit being produced in your life by the Holy Spirit to live lives that makes an impact on others and glorifies Christ? Is the Holy Spirit evident in your life? May that question, and may these words, burn deeply within all of our hearts this morning. For his name's sake. Amen.